Hi there. My name is Sasha Noren, and I'd like to welcome you to Click Data and Learn Microsoft Outlook 2003. Today, we're going to see how much simpler it's gotten to juggle a lot of information at once with this tool. How to sort through that which concerns you most immediately and to toss out that which isn't wanted any longer or is a nuisance. You'll see with this version that it's easier than ever to remember things, even while you work. With Outlook as your center of communications, there's a lot more than just sending and receiving email. A greater focus is placed on the application being an, an electronic communicator, whether you're working alone or are part of a team. Whether in keeping in contact with each other or even how Outlook can keep itself informed of the goings-on in other programs inside Office 2003. So, we've set out to let you know about all of this as follows. Part 1 concerns how we'll get going in the Outlook milieu or environment. You'll create three types of email accounts, go into Exchange Server Accounts and check Hotmail. After we've seen how to set up various accounts, we'll check out how to forward mail and receive it, automatically or manually. You'll see how you can find out whether or not what you sent has been read by recipients. This is via an indication called an email receipt for it being read. There are even ways of working with Outlook offline that I'm sure will be of use. This third part covers how your complete view of the navigation window in Outlook 2003 looks. We'll check out the navigation window and its contents and familiarize ourselves with the various views you can obtain like folders, categories, your appointment calendar, and the people you frequently keep in touch with, either for business or for pleasure. With so much information juggling going on in cyberspace, your communication centers need some structure for handling information. You'll see in this chapter how you can issue or take in digital business cards, setting rules on how your message flow should function as you want is very important. One good thing is a way of setting flags to some messages according to how important you feel they are. You'll insert automatic signatures to your messages and search correctly for old information that was a little bit more important than you originally thought it was, and which has suddenly gained more importance. As your electronic communicator, Outlook should not only be your means of keeping in touch with people, it can also reach other programs inside your computer and keep in contact with those as well. Part 5 widens our path here somewhat to see how this is done, how you can connect documents and how you can earmark documents, and what this means is explained. You can use smart tags to communicate or to be able to work in parallel with multiple programs and be able to attach files in different ways. In Chapter 6, finding out how Outlook helps you work both fast and more efficiently in less time is covered. You can get help from functions that can plan meetings more effectively and let you book equipment and locations in advance, right from Outlook. You can divide up your folders and files depending on how you work within a network and how to let Outlook act as your secretary, telling people who query you that you're not in at the moment and when you're expected to be back.
the first few 50 times you start Outlook, you will be asked to activate the application. It isn't necessary to do that straight away, of course, but if you don't after a while, the functions inside will weaken a little. So that's a good reason to activate the application. Doing this is a way of ensuring you have a legal copy of the application as well. You go into the Help menu and then choose Activate Product. Some text is then sent from your computer containing information about the hardware capability and the Microsoft Office package you've installed. I notice that a pop-up informs me that I've installed it already. Must have forgotten. I click OK. Go ahead and do it now if you need to.